Ever wondered why your beloved indoor plants go from vibrant to lifeless? Could it be a common disease? Indoor gardening is not just about watering your plants and providing them with ample sunlight. It also involves understanding and identifying the signs of common plant diseases. Like us, plants can fall sick too, and just as with us, early detection can make a huge difference. Many indoor plants are susceptible to a variety of diseases. These can range from the powdery residue of mildew, the wilting and discoloration caused by root rot, to the pesky infestations of spider mites or fungal gnats. Each disease presents its own unique challenge and can impact the health of your indoor garden. Understanding these diseases is crucial to maintaining a thriving indoor garden. It's about being proactive, not reactive, in your plant care. After all, a healthy plant is a happy plant. Stay tuned as we dive into the specifics of these diseases and how to cure them. First on our list is the notorious powdery mildew. Looks like your plant's been dusted with flour, doesn't it? This common fungal disease manifests as white or gray powdery spots on the leaves, stems, and even flowers of your indoor plants. Quite the eyesore and far from the lush greenery you want in your indoor garden. Powdery mildew is caused by various fungal species, each with a preference for specific plants. This pesky fungus thrives in warm, dry climates and often takes hold when plants are crowded together, limiting airflow. It's also more likely to appear if your plant is under stress from overwatering, underwatering, or inadequate light. Now, what can it do to your plants? Well, at first, powdery mildew might only seem like a cosmetic issue, but as it spreads, it affects photosynthesis, the process in which plants convert light into energy. This can stunt growth and cause leaves to yellow and drop prematurely. In severe cases, it can even lead to the death of the plant. But don't panic. Prevention is the best cure, and there are steps you can take to keep powdery mildew at bay. Ensure your plants have plenty of space for good airflow. Avoid overhead watering to keep leaves dry, and ensure they're getting the right amount of light. If you do spot powdery mildew, treatment is necessary to keep it from spreading. Start by removing and disposing of any affected leaves. Then mix a solution of one tablespoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of liquid soap, and one gallon of water. Spray this solution on your plant, making sure to coat the tops and bottoms of all leaves. This will help to kill the fungus without harming your plant. Remember, the key is to act fast. Powdery mildew can spread quickly, but with early detection and the right methods, your plants can overcome it. With early detection and the right methods, your plants can overcome powdery mildew. Moving on to another common culprit, root rot. Ever noticed a foul smell or browning roots? When we talk about indoor plant diseases, root rot is a frequent offender. It's like the silent killer of the plant world, often going unnoticed until it's too late. The first signs could be anything from yellowing leaves to stunted growth, but the real evidence is underground. When you pull up the plant, you'll see the roots have turned from a healthy white or tan to a dark brown or black. They may also feel soft and mushy instead of firm and give off a distinctly unpleasant smell. So what causes this? Overwatering is the usual suspect. Plants need a careful balance of water and oxygen for their roots. Too much water and the roots become oxygen starved, creating a perfect environment for root rot fungi to thrive. Poor drainage and compacted soil can also contribute to this problem. The impact on the plant can be devastating. The roots are the plant's lifeline, responsible for taking up water and nutrients. When root rot sets in, the roots can't perform this crucial function, and the plant will eventually wilt and die if left untreated. Preventing root rot is mainly about maintaining a healthy watering routine. Water your plants only when the top inch of soil is dry and ensure your pots have good drainage. Using a well-aerated soil mix can also help prevent water logging. But what if your plant already has root rot? Don't despair, it's possible to save it. First, remove the plant from the pot and trim off the affected roots. Be sure to sterilize your pruning shears afterwards to prevent spreading the disease. Then, repot the plant in fresh, well-draining soil. You might want to consider using a fungicide as well. Remember, getting your plant back to health may take some time, but it's well worth the effort. After all, the roots are the heart of the plant, and a healthy heart is essential for a thriving plant. Remember, healthy roots are key to a thriving plant. Scene script. Next up, we tackle the tiny terror known as spider mites. These minuscule marauders are so small that you might not even notice them until your plant starts showing symptoms. Spider mites are not insects, but arachnids, closer relatives to spiders. They're usually less than a millimeter long and come in various colors, including red, green, yellow, and brown. 
These little critters are plant-sucking pests that feed on the underside of leaves, causing discoloration and damage. The first sign of a spider mite infestation is often tiny spots yellowing or browning on the leaves. If the infestation gets serious, you might even notice webbing on your plant. This is because just like their spider cousins, spider mites spin webs, especially when they occur in high populations. Spider mites thrive in dry, warm conditions. Overwatering won't help here as these mites aren't big fans of moisture. Hence, they're a common problem in indoor plants, especially during the winter when indoor air tends to be drier. Prevention is always better than cure. Regularly wiping your plant's leaves and maintaining a humid environment can deter these tiny terrors. Consider misting your plants or using a humidifier. If you've got an infestation on your hands, don't panic. First, isolate the infected plant to prevent the mites from spreading. Then, get ready to wage a two-pronged war. Start by giving your plant a good shower to wash off as many mites as possible. Next, it's time for treatment. You can use imidacide or if you prefer a more organic approach, consider using neem oil or insecticidal soap. Apply the treatment thoroughly and remember, consistency is key. Repeat the process every few days until you've completely eradicated the mites. In severe cases, you might have to let go of the plant to save the rest. It's a tough decision, but sometimes it's the only way to prevent a full-blown infestation. Remember, spider mites might be small, but they can cause big problems. So keep a keen eye on your plants and act swiftly at the first sign of trouble. Don't let these tiny creatures rob your plants of their health. Scene script. Lastly, we have fungal gnats, those tiny flying bugs around your plants. Fungal gnats, or fungus gnats as they are commonly known, are small, dark, mosquito-like bugs. No, they're not the buzzing mosquitoes you're thinking of, but they're equally annoying. These little critters are fond of damp, rich soils and are often found around house plants with high moisture levels. Now, what brings these unwelcome guests to your indoor garden party? Overwatering is the main culprit. Fungal gnats lay their eggs in moist soil, where larvae feed on plant roots and organic matter. The damage is most severe in seedlings, cuttings, and young plants, which may lose vigor and eventually wilt. But don't fret. Prevention is the first line of defense. Start by allowing the soil to dry out between watering sessions. Fungal gnats thrive in damp conditions, so keeping the soil a bit dry can help deter these pests. Also, consider using a soilless potting mix, especially for plants that prefer well-drained soil. These mixes are not only light and airy, promoting healthy root growth, but they're also less likely to harbor these gnats. Now let's move on to the cure. If you've spotted these pests around your indoor plants, it's time to take action. Begin by removing the top two centimeters of soil where the eggs and larvae live. Replace it with fresh, sterile potting soil. Next, introduce beneficial nematodes or hypoaspis miles, natural predators of these gnats, into your soil. These beneficial bugs will feast on the gnats' larvae, breaking their life cycle. For a more hands-on approach, try sticky traps. These are yellow cards coated with a sticky substance that attracts and traps adult gnats. Place these near your plants and you'll see a reduction in their numbers. Lastly, insecticidal soaps or neem oil can be used as a final resort. These treatments are best used sparingly and only when the infestation is severe. Remember, the goal is to protect your plants while causing the least harm to the environment. With the right measures, you can keep your indoor garden gnat-free. So, we've covered powdery mildew, root rot, spider mites, and fungal gnats. Let's recap. Powdery mildew, that ghostly white coating, can be fought with a simple mixture of milk and water. Root rot, the silent killer, can be prevented by ensuring your plants are not overwatered and have proper drainage. Spider mites, those tiny web spinners, can be tackled with a spray of water or an insecticidal soap. And lastly, fungal gnats, those annoying little flies, can be controlled with yellow sticky traps or by allowing the plant soil to dry out between watering. Each of these diseases, while common, can be readily managed with a bit of knowledge and care. And remember, every plant is different. What works for one might not work for another. So keep observing, keep learning, and keep experimenting. Remember, a healthy plant starts with you. Happy gardening.